Praise be to Jesus and Mary. You're listening to Returning to Catholic Roots in a New Age World, a podcast hosted by Holly and Mandy. Let's begin our show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast, Returning to Catholic Roots in a New Age World. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and we are excited to be back for another episode. And we will begin by saying, Jesus, Jesus meek and, and humble, humble of heart, make, make our hearts like unto thine. So, yeah, i um, excited and happy to be back this week and um, uh, ready to dive back into our book, unless we have anything else. Well, didn't, did you have any shout-outs? Nope, I didn't get any this week. Well, aside from Dominic Cajazo writing another book? Yeah, but I, well, I didn't, did you, did he ask you to shout-out? No, but we Oh, you're just out. saying, okay. <laughs> well, you asked me if I got any shout-outs. I didn't get that, but I did see it, uh-huh. that uh, the um, the Cajazo family, their website, Maccabean Uprising, that we shared last week, I think they, I think he came out with that book the day after Right. We busy, shouted busy. out their last new book. There's <laughs> so some busy, busy people. Busy writing, busy writing. But, That's um, great. We need it. We need more. Yeah, that one looks very interesting. Um, I can't remember the exact title, it's about but the Antichrist. Vatican II. Antichrist and Vatican II, I think it's called. Right. And um, and then also I did, um, I did see, but I think this one is really, really fresh. Um, yeah, she only posted an hour ago that she has another book. A Year's Thoughts by Father William Doyle, which is a reprint, a ca- uh, their second Catholic reprint mm-hmm. to go along with the Year with the Saints. So they're just pumping out good Catholic content for us all. Right. So and we out, appreciate it. And we do. We do. So check out Maccabeanuprising.com. <clears throat> um, com again. I'll put the link in again just so you don't have to go back to last week's episode to find it. But um Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um, and uh, summer started off here with a bang. It's sweltering hot. It's, yeah, it's abnormally hot for June. But um, as I read in Trustful Surrender to Divine Providence, we're not even supposed to complain about the weather. I love it. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. I love well, it. Well, no, what because what it says is that it may be like... Well, they use rain, obviously, as example. But when you play, it's raining. Obviously, the farmer needs that rain, right? Yeah. So you never know. Well, you know, I mean, we should put into perspective all this climate change. I know because I don't really remember it getting this hot in June. Oh, Do it's you? been yeah. Oh yes. Oh okay. Yes, yes, it's been hot. Like I mean, I I don't care about climate change. I don't care about that stuff because, you know, I mean, God's will be done. God's will be done. Right. And, I mean, that's the way we have to look at everything. So, I mean, I guess it's just a good reminder for us, you know, not to get sucked down these rabbit Rabbit holes. holes. Oh, I see where you're saying. You know, like even if the world does explode because of climate change. Well, so be it. Then it's God's will. Like Whether it explodes because of climate change or something else, does it matter? Right. You know. And at the end of the day, um, you know, we don't control it. No. We're not the powers to be that control things. Like... Even, you know, even this plastic nonsense. I knew you were going to bring up the plastic. Well, I hate plastic. Let's well, be clear. It's, it's, it, is, it is a bit mind-boggling when they won't give you a plastic bag. And it, we were just talking about this yesterday because I bought all these. I bought this big thing of sinkable toys for the pool. Yeah. And you, they wouldn't give me a plastic bag to put in. So here I'm walking out of Walmart with all this stuff in my hands because I, yet again, forgot my reusable bags. And then I get home, and this thing is wrapped in so much plastic. Yeah. I could barely get into it. Plastic tray. Each toy was wrapped around plastic. Mm -hmm. There was so much plastic in this packaging. Right. And so, and like, you know, so their, you know, their idea is like, oh, we'll get rid of the plastic straws, and that'll save the environment. (laughs) You know, like, first of all, okay, if. If the environment is, um, is counting trouble. on that, you're losing. They're, you're losing because there's a whole <laughs> heck of a lot more plastic you got to get rid of. You know, so you go, you go through the, you know, you go through the, uh, what do you call it, grocery store. And, you know, they won't give you a plastic bag to carry out your five tons of plastic. Mm-hmm. 
you know, like it's it just, just doesn't make sense. It's just, you know, it's just, you know what it is. It's just another virtue signaling. No, it's it's just not courteous. Yeah. It's just another thing to take away from a courteous from a like, yeah from a civilized um, thinking of others society. S- yeah. centered society. Yeah. And our book right now is talking about manners. Yeah. I mean, and, and there can be. Well, I mean, and it that well, this does tie into what we're saying, and I, and I'm not. Try, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but it is really bad. I think that it gives the it gives the person working the cashier the the opportunity to be um, like they don't care that you know because you're supposed to have your bag. Yeah. And if you don't have your bag, that's not her problem. Like, we've done a flip and, here. And and I, I have proof of it because we went to, my daughter was doing a recital, and we went out to get her a nice dress to wear for the recital. Yeah. And we went to the store, and she found a beautiful dress, uh, a little shrug to put over it, a pair of shoes. Yeah. And by the time we got up to the cash, the price of everything has gone up. I think it was, a, oh, it was over $100, right? Yeah. And it was a really, it was a fancy dress. And the woman behind the cash register just took the dress, took the security tag off, and just kind of flumped it on the cash. Rolled it in a ball. Rolled it in a big (laughs) ball and and not threw it at me. Like, I don't want to over-exaggerate. Yeah. But she kind of just slid it on the counter. She slid it across to me. Yeah, I mean. Didn't, Didn't ask if I wanted to buy a bag. Didn't ask if I needed a bag. The expectation is that put this in your own bag you know like and i mean a lot of that is is the big box too no i know but you know I, but like what the i'm people, saying is, is before people just don't care they don't and i i honestly think that getting rid of the plastic bag has done that oh it yeah. has given them the opportunity and the chance to not care and stand behind that well you should have your own bag so not you know my like you know don't care you don't like it here go somewhere else and, and don't before care. you you never would have seen that no i mean back when you think about how she they would have folded that dress up they would have folded it, it. they would have treated you. your purchase like it was extra special. special yeah you know because they were accounting on your business i mean it was i mean the customer was always right and we've i, I mean, lost all that we've lost all that and we have meant i have, we've mentioned it before yeah you know like the idea of customer service is dead. Is pretty dead. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while, you every meet, once in a while you get a really good, you know, you meet somebody so that goes com- above you know, and beyond. Should, it's not say it's completely dead. But, but as a so- society as a whole, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, right? So yeah. in our effort to you know save the world, we've just gotten away, which we've we're not removed, doing. We've just removed even manners. even if it was, even if it was a legit thing. Yeah. The plastic, right? Yeah. I'm not saying it's not. Then they should wipe it all out and they should have different... What's wrong with paper? You know. Why don't we get a paper bag? Well, well, they used to get paper bags. I know. It's too expensive, I bet. Well, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I in the, see, you got to remember, in the 50s, plastic didn't exist. Right. Everything was paper. It didn't exist in the 50s. Yeah, and and before plastic, I think didn't come till the '60s, right? You know, like all these things we take for granted, water bottles and yeah, even you know, even your Cooley cups or your Stanley cup or whatever you're drinking from, like none of that existed. They were like, where's your mason jar or something? To, yeah, to carry your beverage in. Yeah, you yeah. know. So with 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 technology and. Um, Modernizing all these things came to be. Well, you know what's funny is I was watching like an old show, like not old show, but it was set in olden times, you know, the early 1900s. And um, they go into the general store and all the women had baskets. Right. They carrying always... baskets. So there was no bags at the general store. No. But you, you knew you were going to the general store, so you always had your basket. But the shopkeeper always wrapped your stuff up in paper or whatever whatever it was you know uh-huh. you see it in the scene wrap it up in paper tie a little string around it give it to the woman and then she'd put it in her basket in her basket right it was such a nice way of doing things i mean i wouldn't mind i wouldn't Simple. mind i don't i mean as i said i don't like plastic no i'm not yeah every day i fill up garbage bags of plastic well would i look weird going into walmart with my wicker basket 
Can you wrap? <laughs> I know, but you see, it's pointless. Should I take it? Should I start doing that? It's pointless because you're not, you know, you're going to take, uh, you know, a pound of bologna and it's going to be mm-hmm. wrapped in, in plastic. plastic. I know. Like I just it, thought there's, it just seems so simple when you're watching it. It's like we've overcomplicated everything. We've overcomplicated everything. We've big boxed everything. We've yeah. gone extravagant. And, um, you know, and now they want they want to take away the courtesy of a bag. bag. Yeah. And they think that that's going to solve solve this. Yeah. yeah. Craziness. So anyways, well, down with plastic, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I, I personally try to use glass. Glass. In my house, at all. Like, like, what do you mean? Like, I don't have. I don't even like plastic bowls. Oh, you? Yeah, it's like okay, mason jars, glass bowls. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I like. I serve. We serve things in well, glass. Well, it's, it's nicer for. One. I mean, it's a little inconvenient when it breaks, but yeah, you know, because it's hard to get rid of. Yeah, but I mean, generally, and I only do that. It's not that I hate hate plastic. But I, I like to upscale us a little bit. Yeah. Like, I'm like, we don't Have know. Have some cooth. Yeah, we don't need to, you know, just do all this all the time. Like, I personally would rather wash dishes. Yeah. Than, than eat off paper plates. Plates, yeah. You know, I'd say, no, I'd rather, wa- I'll just wash, wash the, the dishes. dishes. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I don't mind that. So yeah. And we've tried to, we've tried to, you know... Make everything so easy, so easy, so fast, so, you know. When we th- we end up throwing a lot away that we shouldn't. Yeah, we and money There's a too. lot of waste. Yeah. A lot of waste, so. I mean, they're on, they're on to something in about the right way, but they're just going about it the wrong way, I guess. Well, no, they've taken away anything that's convenient. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. Anyways, well, anyway. Well, let's get on yeah, to let's our. Let's get on to our manners. What they said, what. What they said because now we're going into this, the chapter. The chapter of, oh, we were talking about manner. Yeah. Now we're talking about manners. Manners. Remember, we have our manner, what, the way we carry ourselves and whatever. Now we're going into our manners. Okay, so, quote, manners are ways of doing things either in keeping with or opposed to standards of refinement, good taste. And consideration for others the former can constitute what we call quote-unquote good manners the latter quote-unquote bad manners end quote right so I mean the the book is going to go and it's going to explain a little bit but to me the good manners versus the bad manners um, is on the same parallel it's the same thing of the of virtue and virtues vice. versus vice, vice. And it continues to explain this to us. Like, good manners are a virtue, right? Yeah. So when we're practicing good manners, in reality, we are practicing virtue. Right. Okay, quote, Good manners are founded on cordiality and gentleness, on respect for others and a sensitive understanding of their needs and feelings, and on modesty, humility, and kindness. Bad manners are found on selfishness. They might be labeled... Quote, I do as I please, end quote. Without good manners, our dealings with one another would become repulsive, crude, rough, and cruel. The very opposite of what our Lord commanded when he said, quote, love one another, end quote. Yeah. So the bad manners were what? Selfish? Like, I do as I please? Self- yeah. They're like, founded I mean, on selfishness. Yeah. Basically, your manners are, ba- your bad manners are just founded on your own wants and needs. Yeah. Right, and you and you don't take the time, and really, it's not it's not taking the time to be bothered to think about but it. anybody else, anybody else but like, yourself. Yeah, you know, and I mean, I think we can all find find ourselves in that. You know, it, if, especially if we get absorbed. Like I know if I'm absorbed in my thoughts or what's going on, something in my head. You know, and and I can come. You know, and somebody can go come to talk to me, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm yeah. I start like being very because I'm not. I haven't put myself, I guess, in the situation because my mind is somewhere else, you know? Right. You know, so I guess we're, we all fall into this. Yeah. Right? This, oh, th- yeah. That, you know, you, you may be having bad manners at right. certain times in your life. Okay, quote, It is easy to see that the practice of good manners is in reality 
If we supply the supernatural intention, the practice of a wide range of virtues most pleasing to God. Indeed, it has been said that good manners may be learned from a study of charity, humility, and mortification, end quote. Right, so good manners are pleasing to God. I mean, again, the chapter continues, like it does say, you know, like they, we have all these etiquette books, and it does mention this, right? So, yeah. I mean, we don't anymore. Nobody, there is no such thing as etiquette. No. There's no such thing as propriety. There's no such thing, you know, right now. Yeah. Like people generally do as they please. And the one area, too, that I find that... I, the, the one area that I find really disturbing is a young uh, is um, amongst mothers, right? Because they don't know that they're doing it, right? Right. Re in regards to their children, mm -hmm. so what they do is they push manners aside for the sake of the child. And I'm not, and I'm not saying when they're dealing with their children. I'm saying when they're dealing with other people. Oh. Right. I, I know. I'm confusing. Yeah, yeah I, you're looking lost at me. I've lost you. Right. So. So the thing is, is that your children are an extension of you as a mother, right? So you have a tendency to be like, no, the children can't do this. No, the children can't do that. The children shouldn't do this. You know, and you, you tend to, um, instead of looking at it from the perspective of what is charitable, mm -hmm in regards to what you can and cannot tolerate towards your yeah. children. Yeah. You tend to have, we, not you, me, us, everybody, me. we tend to have that extension of selfishness. Right. Because the child comes first. And then you end up having bad manners. And then result. you end up, you know, being uncharitable. Yeah. You end up coming across as rude. You, you unkind. All these things, yeah. because I mean, and sometimes, um, well, always, a mother always thinks when she does this that that she is legitimate, because right. the child comes first, justified, and she's yeah. justified, right? Yeah. So she's justified this. So the but the only thing I would encourage people is to be very very careful that you know because the the practice of virtue actually comes first. Yeah. Not the child. I mean, look at all the look at all the mothers that sacrificed their children. Yes. To become saints. Yes. You know, like they didn't. So, you have to you have to say to yourself that, um, I, and I'm just mentioning this because I see it a lot. You know that for the sake of the child, I have the right to be rude to you. Right. Yeah. Right, and you don't really have that right because of the child. I mean, it's just not the practice of virtue. Right, and and your children, you're showing. You have to show yourself to your children as somebody who always practices virtue, even in the in the in the face of what is distasteful, mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so I'm just saying, just, you know, just to think about this. Yeah. To think about this. Well, because it, and, and the reason why you say that, I know why you say that, it's we are living in a world where we, that's what we've been taught. Yes. So the child comes first, the safety of the child comes first, everything about the child comes first. That, that. That there's nothing above the child. Right. That, it's just a fact. Yeah. That's what we've been taught. No, I know. I mean, and that's, that's part of the way that we create the demigods. Yeah. That's part of the way that we create spoiled children. You know, and we... But it, it is, but it's simply not true. And it's simply not true. You know, God comes first. Yes. Pleasing God comes first. And when you say God comes first, that means charity comes, comes first. first. Right? So, I mean, obviously, everybody uses their discretion. Yeah. You know, and but they have to actually want to, um, you know, should pray about it and say, please, you know, help me, help me discern this. this because and... it's a very, it's a, it's a very funny line that's very, very hard to distinguish. Right. You know, between am I am I 
doing this selfishness? Yeah. Or is this or is this a moment there should be charity? Right. Um, this is if you're hearing this beeping all the time. It's my son's insulin pump. Yeah. <laughs> He's fine. Don't worry, everybody. It's just off of his body for a little while, so it's beeping to tell me he's off. Anyways. Um, okay, quote, A religious might lead a life of continual penance and attain to genuine sanctity through the pers- persevering practice of good manners. End quote. So, a person, what story? A religious might lead a life of continual penance and attain to right. genuine sanctity through the persevering practice of good manners. Right. So, I, so what, what the book is saying is if you, if you lived your life continually in the form of good manners, it would be a life of continual penance. Yeah. Right? So, th- so think about that for a minute. Like, that's, that's kind of... Um, because good manners is putting what they just said at the beginning of this chapter, putting yourself aside and thinking of others. All the time. All the time. That is a form of penance. Yes. You know, to be like, I'm not going to think about myself at all today, and I'm going to put everybody else before me. Right. You know? That is a form of penance. It is. Okay, quote. Suggested lists of mortifications given in spiritual books very often read like a page from a manual of etiquette. This thought must have been in the mind of Ralph Waldo Emerson when he wrote, quote, good manners are made up of petty sacrifices, end quote. Right. So, I mean, there's a, that guy, I think he wrote a very famous etiquette, etiquette book. book. There are several been. very famous etiquette books. Like, I mean, and if we go back to the day, like even... Um, you know, everybody, most people are familiar with Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. That era, right? Yeah. Where everything was etiquette. Every, everything. Etiquette was everything. You know, it was more important that you followed etiquette than anything. Yeah. Like, you know, like even, I was reading further on, but the one, the one thing that they, um, well, anyway, in Pride and Prejudice, you couldn't actually just go up and talk to somebody. No, and there's that scene in the movie where, in the old one. Yes. Where um, Mr. Collins is going to go talk to Mr. Darcy, and they're like, uh, like Elizabeth Ben is like, no, no, like, and she's like trying to like stop it, but she goes, someone's has to stop him. You can't just do that. You just can't go up and talk. to You him. can't just go up and talk to Mr. Darcy. Yeah. In a public um, setting like that. Because they hadn't been introduced. They hadn't been properly formally introduced. Yeah. And Mr. Collins and his So you he know, was gonna take it upon, he was gonna take him it upon himself and they were to introduce mortified. himself. Yeah. Like you don't get the opportunity to introduce yeah. yourself. So it's, I mean, this is the things and I mean And I mean but it's funny because if so if you didn't know what, what it was like back then or if you weren't familiar with Pride and Prejudice, somebody would watch that movie and see that scene and go, So what? Big deal. He went up and said hey mm-hmm. i'm mr collins what's you know the problem? <laughs> i know or they go hey what's happening yeah you yeah. know i mean that's the way we talk yeah and the way we do what's up you know or you know yeah. you just go up to random whoever you want yeah and say whatever you want there's no there's no etiquette in our society none yeah, yeah. okay quote good manners to be real should be rooted in one's spiritual life Moreover, they must, in their application to daily needs, be fixed into a habit. They cannot be assumed on this occasion or that for the falsity or superficiality of such intermittent politeness would be obvious, end quote. Right, it can't be fake. Yeah. Right, so now, so now you, so what they're saying is you go about, you know, your daily business where you just, you know, or whatever, get out of my way, or, you know, you're in the door, you don't bother. But now we're in an important situation, so now i got to pour on the good manners. So your manners are not one of habit. They're one of... They're rooted in your spiritual life for a reason. They're not rooted in your spiritual life. You just happen to know that you're visiting the Queen of yeah. England, so, so now you have to curtsy. Yeah. Right? Or bow, or wait to be talked to, or, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. So, or you're in an important thing, and so now you're going to put forth your good manners and sometimes that falls very flat it de- well it does because it's 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 fake. it's fake yeah quote well and just to that effect if i can just say that's why when everything is rooted in the spiritual life it yeah. has meaning and purpose right you know okay quote the habit of good manners universally incul- 
inculcated and practiced would establish a paradise of Christian living, wherein heaven would recognize us to be the children of the same Father and brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, end quote. So, right, the habit of good manners, universally, in, see, there's too many big words in this. I should have pre-read this. <laughs> inculcated and practiced would establish a paradise. So basically, if everybody was practicing good manners and excelling at it, we would have a paradise of Christian living. No, I know. And here, okay, so here's a thought, too, because this comes up often around our house, is, um, is the Our Father. And yeah. um, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those oh. who trespass against us. Yeah. Right? You know, I said, a lot of times um, people do things, and they have no idea that they've done them. Yeah. And that's a trespass. Yeah. Right? They, they didn't mean to do it. Yeah. Right? They weren't practicing good manners or at this particular moment they were gruff or they did something or they grabbed something when you were yeah. using it and they didn't pay attention didn't that, you, twice about it. that you were using it. You know? And so, and so but, it's, but they didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. So that's why when we say in the Our Father... Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Because if people do it to us, that means we're doing it to others. With, and half the time, maybe unknowingly. So we no, want to make sure we make rec- recompense for that. That's why right. we say that. Right. So so the book is saying if everybody had perfect manners, yeah, it would be like living with your brothers. And, you know, it would yeah. be, um, reminds me of that, um, I think it's Bugs Bunny cartoon. Chip and Dale, you Chip. go first. No, you go first. Oh. No, you. No, you. You know, and they go back to little chipmunks. Yeah, I know. I and they know. go back and forth with the constant. They over polite each other. Do they? They can't. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of funny. Oh. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> maybe we should be more like that then. <laughs> yes. Chip and Dale. Um, okay. Quote: Training in good manners is not accomplished in a day. The grace of politeness does seem to be innate in some persons. But for most people, the work of cultivating good manners calls for constant attention, patience, and unwearing effort, both with regard to oneself and one's pupils. Constant effort. End, end quote. Did I say end quote? Yeah, constant attention, yes. patient, and unwearing effort. Unwearing effort. Like so you it's just a lot of work to have good manners you just you don't wake up and you know be like oh i'm gonna be full of good manners today i guess be full of good manners right it's it is the it is the habitual practice of virtue mm-hmm. right it is the habitual practice and of something over and over again until it's sec- it becomes second nature to you right so it, until it becomes something that you automatically do mm-hmm. or that you would never think twice about never think twice about it or never think of not doing yeah you know okay quote in medieval days religion and good manners were closely linked they are still united through the though the world has tried to separate them the only successful method for the development of good manners is to teach them along with religion end quote well and i think yeah to teach along with religion because that goes back to where they said earlier that if it's not rooted in your spiritual life and it's not a daily fixed habit, they they can have that falsity or superficiality. Right. So, I mean, of course they have to be taught along with religion because religion gives them their purpose and the direction and the 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 roots behind it. Right. You you're know, doing why this for you're doing it. You're doing this for love of God. God. Yeah. You're behaving and practicing like this to put yourself last and other Other people people first first. yeah uh quote the love of god and of our lady reference for the blessed sacrament admiration for the saints and angels respect for respect for priests religious and holy objects all these are a help in inculcating good manners in the young persons entrusted to our care end quote right so i mean you must teach your children to respect the priests to the blessed sacrament, the blessed sacrament. God, love of God, love our of lady. God. They have to, they have to, you know, bow down before these things. I mean, if right. they can't do that, how can you expect them to have good manners? No, you, you, know? you, you know, and and um, if they don't have the reverence for the things that are at the top, you have to teach your children um, 
the reverence of the blessed sacrament like that you know when you go into that church you have to act and behave a certain way you have to act and behave as if you can actually see god sitting there right beside you because he is yeah and you know i'm gonna say you know because of the society that we live in and manners have taken a back seat that maybe not as much attention is given to this well you know even something as simple as i would say good manners towards our lord and and I learned this, um, I didn't, I, I'm ashamed to say that I just learned this recently, like within the last four years. There were many times where I went to the church on an off day, like, you know, whatever, to do mm-hmm. whatever, right? And I would, I would go in and just go about my business. Right. I and know. then one day it struck me, it's like, would you go to your sister's house? And walk in and just start doing whatever you're doing and not say hello to her. Right. Or not greet her or not come in the door and greet her or something. Right. So when you go to our Lord's house and you zip in to drop off something or whatever, Mm -hmm. how do you not go up and make us a visit? Even if it's for one Even second. Even if it's for one second. Even if it's for one second, to, if you're in a rush, you zip in the church, you you take the holy water, you make the sign of the cross, and you say, Jesus, I love you, good morning, or Jesus, good afternoon, I love you, and then you leave. Yeah. Even that. Right. But I wasn't even doing, like, this was, you know, you know, whatever. But I, I'm ashamed that I had to learn that at such a late age that I didn't realize I was doing that, you know? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, no one now, when I go to that church, if it's to bring the flowers for Sunday or if it's to do whatever, the first thing that is done is to go upstairs. And greet our Lord. And greet our Lord first. Right. Okay, so, and it's really good practice if you're if you're even going by the church, like outside of the church, yeah. that you do the sign of the cross. Yeah. Or even like sign a cemetery, too. Yeah. Cemetery. Like, these are all good habits Mm -hmm. and they're good manners to our lord yeah right and we don't have good manners to our lord how are we going to have good manners to to people or to the souls in purgatory too right yeah so okay so quote training in good manner oh sorry we read that part one second here here we go quote an intelligent devotion to the church liturgy is another effective aid for the roman catholic ritual is a veritable ceremonial of perfect manners. Yeah, an intelligent devotion. Devo- is that what I said? Intelligent. An intelligent devotion to the church liturgy is another yeah. effective aid. An intelligent devotion. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that what does that mean? Like living the liturgical year? Yes, right? Yeah. Right? You know, um, it's doing the celebrations that are celebrating. Like, I know people that, um, you know, I... Uh, dress according to the liturgical year red (laughs) for pentecost yeah you know they do all these you know fun things to you know because that's where their mind is they're thinking of god yeah Yeah. and they want to unite themselves there right so i guess we are in the season of pentecost and i'm wearing green oh good i'm wearing green too wow (laughs) (laughs) totally (laughs) totally that's not not hard for me green's my favorite color (laughs) Okay, quote, and now the question may be raised as to whether religious need to know and follow the customs of the world in the matter of politeness. The answer is simple. The necessity for good manners has brought into existence a code of directives known as rules of etiquette, end quote. Right, so they're, they're saying just because the word, okay, now, or let's take this back too, right, because this book is written in the, what was it, the 50s? Yeah. Right, um, where good manners, it was mandatory. Yeah. Like I mean, and it's part. It was part of being a Christian society, and so they're asking the question: Do a religious have to partake in the so-called good manners of society? society. Yeah. Right. I mean, we live how many years later, and good manners is not like part of the society. It's not part of our society. Yeah. Right, but the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Yes, just because you're religious doesn't mean you don't partake in the good manners of society. Right. Quote, resting upon the same solid foundation as true politeness, they serve the good purpose of unifying custom, and they provide a generally accepted way of acting in specific instances. 
It is right, therefore, for all, including religious, to acquaint themselves with these outward expressions of refined intercourse, end quote. Right. So, pretty much, yes. Yes, you know, to be polite, to, um, you know, I'm trying to think, like, good manners is such so much more involved than saying please and thank you. So right? much more. It's so much more involved. It, it, it means, you know, responding to an RSVP. Mm-hmm. If someone sends you an RSVP, give them the um, give them the, the the good manners of responding. Yeah. Yes so or no. So many times people say, "Please let me know through email." Like they'll send an email. Please let me know if you're coming. Yeah. Um, or, or sorry, not please, please let me know if you are unable or able to attend. That's the phrase I'm looking for. And then people just don't reply. They at don't all, reply. Period. And then the, then then it's not to me. That was the one thing that always struck me. It's a matter of two. Not just telling people. People often think like, "Well, I'm not going, so I'm not going to respond." Right. Well, take, why don't you respond and say, sorry, I'm unable to make it, but I send my regards or something. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's good that's manners. That's good manners. I mean, I... So then someone can go and go down their list and go, okay, Holly's not coming, check. Yes. She's off the list. <laughs> it, it, it just helps people, and, it, and it's, it's a matter of saying, well, I know I'm not coming, and that's all that matters. They'll figure it out. Well, no, that's not... Or, you know, manners. you show up when you're not planned to show, show up. Show up or... Yeah. You know, or you didn't RSVP and then you come anyway. And then like, you come it's anyway. So unpolite. It, it's so unpolite. And and I do. Th- it's it is a pet peeve of mine. It, yes. Because that nobody knows how that to people RSVP. don't follow the protocol Protocols. of responding to RSVPs. Yes. You know they just I don't know if they. It, I mean a lot of times, and this is an issue too. They think well they haven't decided whether they're going or not, and they're not going to decide to the last minute. Yeah. Well, yeah. make a decision yeah. and then stick with it. Yeah. Like, is that, like, you know, I mean, back in the day when I was younger, I know what was the thing. It was people were waiting for, they didn't want to commit themselves to something that was dull and boring. Because something better might come Because something along. better might come along. Like, yeah. I don't think that's the case now. Like, people are not committing themselves because something better might come along. I just think they're so indecisive we're right. so indecisive as people that oh what if i don't feel like it that day or, yeah what yeah. if i don't what if something comes up what like they cannot actually make it commit and commit. say you're having a tea party i will we'll be, be there, there. Yeah. right and i mean i come from a family that commits a we yeah. commit and b once we're committed we're there. We're there. Well, the other thing, too, is it's your word. It's your word. You're giving your word that you're going to do something or that you're going to be somewhere. Right. You know, and so. so people just welch on their words now. So it's it's very, it's it's very, um, I don't know. It's like wafflers and flakes. Let's yeah. just put it like, like, don't be a waffler and a flake. Yeah. Commit or don't commit. Yeah, yes just, or no. Yes or no. Yeah. If you don't want to go, don't go. And, oh, a lot of this, too. This is where this comes from, too, because I was thinking of a particular person that we know who, who suffers from anxiety. Yeah. And what they do all the time, and she always, she always makes these uh, posts. This is not some, this is a secular person. Yeah. About, you know, how she says stuff, and then when the time comes, she can't do it because of anxiety. And, yeah. And, like, the, the, there's this really big waffling and flaking. Yeah. Kind of thing, right? Yeah. That, oh, I can't get off the couch today. Yeah. And and really, I think that's what it is more than anything. Yeah. That people will not commit because what if they don't, don't feel, feel like, like it, it at the day. very last second? Yeah. Yeah. You know? But, so please, we're, the thing is, is that we're Catholics and we're called, we are called to a higher standing. Right. And good manners is that you commit. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. Like nobody One says you. Other. Nobody says you have to go. But you have to give an. But answer. you have to decide. Yeah, and you have to. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you have to stick to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you decide no, and then maybe something comes up, because the other thing, like especially when we're thinking about weddings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, people are spending a lot of money for your plate. Yeah. Right, and they have to give answers to the catering mm-hmm. companies. Right. That's why there's a date. That's the why there's a date. Right. So when you when you waffle and flake on people, and then the very last minute, and I know as a bride, um, 
which would have been a long time ago, 40 years ago anyway, 40 years ago, I had a whole list of people I had to call to find out if they were coming to my wedding. Because they did an RSVP. Because they did an RSVP. And that was way back in 1984. Mm-hmm. You know? So, um, and it's just progressively gotten worse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, quote, In keeping with this view, a handbook of good manners cites the points of etiquette to be observed in various connections and under various circumstances. Convent life has its own special directives, besides, as we shall see in the sections that follows. End quote. So, these are for convent life. Mm-hmm. They're, so, it goes into a subset, sub, excuse me, sub-subject of manners with ecclesiastics yeah do we have time for that or what where are we at there oh we got 20 minutes oh, okay well then let's roll okay so mm-hmm. now remember we say this is always keep in mind this is handbook for nuns but we can always take it and apply it to ourselves too okay quote in speaking to clergymen or religious brothers always make use of the title corresponding to their rank your eminence your excellency monsignor father general doctor father brother provincial brother never answer merely yes or no end quote and i mean that's so pivotal nobody yes father yeah yes sister right yes brother like you should and they're saying here every answer never answer merely yes or no so every time you answer right no father and yes, pe- father. and back in this time period people pe- t- titles were important yeah you were mrs Mr. Miss. And you know what? The, you would say, well, you know, oh, Big Whoop. Like, you know, people might say Big Whoop. Well, you answer whatever. But, you know, the answering that way kept the, kept the slang out of everything. And it kept but things cordial. Cordial. Because I'm even thinking, they've got doctor on this list. And your doctor asks you a question. You go, nah. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, right, like right. listen to, think about how we talk. When really you, if your doctor asks you, you say, oh, yes, doctor. Yeah. Oh, no, doctor, not today. You know, like you would, that that sounds so much more pleasant. It's a, a very, I mean, we, we've been throwing that word cordial around. Yeah. But that's very what cordial. it is. It's it a keep, very cordial and, and society. And I would say it keeps the relationship professional yes. between people, like a doctor and a patient. Right. Like you're acknowledging his rank. Right. You're acknowledging his standing, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I, I I mentioned this before I think on the on one of our podcasts but my granny had a had a friend Mrs. Couch it's actually my mother's granny yeah. so it was my great grandmother but uh, they were both widows and they referred to themselves as Mrs. Couch and Mrs. Ricketts and that's yeah. the way they talked to one another yeah what would you like Mrs. Couch oh I don't know a cup of tea would be nice Mrs. Ricketts, Ricketts. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's the way and they were best friends mm. yeah. You know, and they were with each other all the time. So when we took away the titles, what we did, especially, we took away the ladder, basically, yeah. too, right? So we did this to the children. I mean, it's to the children that have suffered from this because they never know their place because everybody's on a first-name basis. Right, right. Right, you know, and I, I know, like, in our school system, they, they're they very adamant about the titles. Like, I mean, we have children who in in a classroom that their mom is the teacher and they have to call her, her mrs e yeah mrs e. yeah whatever you know they have to call is. I'll, <laughs> I'll silence that for privacy but you know yeah well and even you know my son she's her his teacher and um his whole life because she's a she's my cousin his second cousin so she's right his aunt yeah. He doesn't call her. He never called her aunt. No, I know. It was a, that was always an uh, second cousins is an awkward uh, relationship right. because, because they don't have a title. Right. But he he did so he did always call her by her first name. But now he goes to school, and he calls her Mrs. You know, and then he comes home and he calls her Mrs. All the time now. Yeah. Like even at, like it doesn't stop just because he's not at school. Right. You know? Right. So. I know, but it's beneficial to the children. It's beneficial to everybody to have titles. Yeah. I mean, I would like, I would like to have a friend that called me Mrs. You know, Drabic. Yeah. I would like that. I would, you know, and I would call her that. I just don't see it happening. 
it just seems a little weird. I don't know, you know, develop. Who wants that. to be my mom's friend and call her Mrs. Stratton? <laughs> yeah. And we're opening auditions. Okay. <laughs> All right. Quote. On entering the parlor where clergymen are waiting, bow graciously and cheerfully and greet the visitors individually, beginning with the most distinguished, even though you have not been introduced. End right. quote. Right, so there, there was that, I, because I, I pre-read that, like in the Pride and Prejudice, they couldn't talk to somebody if they hadn't been introduced. Mm -hmm. But what they're saying, proper etiquette, is you, you address the most distinguished person distinguished? first. Yeah, the, the most person distinguished in the room. person first. So, I mean, if you're in a room, that would be the most elderly. Right. Or, like, if oh, there's you know, a you priest. Say you go into a room and there's a priest and the bishop. You dress the bishop first, then the priest. Right. You know, and then you go down from there. Or if there's, you know, a teacher, a doctor, whatever. Yeah. You, you, I mean, obviously, this ladder is important. Yeah. And we we threw it out several years ago. But, you know, we have to do our best. It's really hard to bring something back when society is not interested or not having it but yeah but you can find little ways i think yeah you know i mean now that i've read that the next time i ever have to be in the company of not have to be but if i ever find myself in the company of bishop and father at the same time <laughs> i will make sure i dress bishop first yeah you know and i'll say your excellency you know yeah okay so quote if you are in a small general general assembly where ecclesiastics are standing Remain standing until they are seated. If you are seated and a clergyman approaches to speak to you, rise, end quote. Right. So we must always rise for the clergy. Well, yes. I mean, that was very common to stand and sit. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that scene in Pride and Prejudice where those men come in and they're standing. And yeah. They're sitting and they're standing. Yeah. It's kind of a funny scene. Yeah. Right, because the women stand up, they stand up, then they sit down, yeah, yeah. you know. But, I mean, it was very common. It was a form of respect. It was showing respect and acknowledgement yeah. for a person and their position. And men used to do it for ladies, Yeah, you know. So. Okay. Now we're going to the subsection of manners with superiors. Right. So, quote, authority comes from God, end quote. It is only just, therefore that you pay attention to the wishes of your superior and obey her orders punctuality, punctually and thoroughly that you be gracious and respectful to her in your manner and speech and that you refrain from criticizing her and listening to criticism about her. And right. The one um, authority comes from God. That is one of my favorite sayings. It, um, it, when Jesus says to Pilate, you would have yeah. no authority over me if it had not been given you from above. Yeah. Like that, that kind of stuck with me when I heard that. And, and I realized that because, I mean, in our society, we have a habit of um, calling out bad authority and saying, yeah. you know, not my president. Yeah. yeah. People do that. Not my president. Not, you know. Not my prime minister. Yeah. Yeah. Not my, my thing like that. Right. Um, if we. If the person. If they have authority over you and and in your community, in your county, people have authority over you, um, policemen, whatever, you know, the mayor or the prime minister or whatever. They yeah, have authority. Yeah. They make the laws. You have to abide by them. They would have, even if they're corrupt and evil, which in most circumstances I believe them to be, yeah. um, it doesn't matter. It they would not have the authority if God had not given it to them. Yeah. You just can't do anything that's a sin. That's all. Yeah, that's right. So you have to keep that in your head when dealing with anybody. Yeah. Right? A judge, if you go have to go to court and the judge. Yeah. Like that judge has authority over you. Mm -hmm. Well, and I mean, not to bring up the stuff that went on here in Canada, but, you know, our prime minister during the dreaded sea where did a lot of things and people started making flags with explicits on them yes and you know that that wasn't right no it wasn't right. like that like you you can disagree with the way he's running the country yes and you 100 percent. you can say like you're you're taking our country to the dogs yeah you know but you don't get to be disrespectful right you don't get to be crude and disrespectful towards him and that's what we've lost in and this that's what we've lost that if we disagree with you and this goes for anything today people have this mentality that if they disagree with you they have a right to be crude to you or they have a right to tell you to stick it where the sun don't shine that kind of thing you know right. like 
that's the mentality. You disrespect me, I disrespect you. Right. No, no, no. That's not how this works. Right, right. You know? So anyways, quote, Rise when your superior enters the room and discontinue for the moment the conversation in which you may be engaged. If she remains standing, you also should stand until she tells you to be seated. Yes. Right, so they're, they're saying the superior, like he's a mother superior. They're yeah. Talking about, they're talking about the mother superior. Mm-hmm. So when she walks into the room, they have to stand. Yeah. Right, and again, it's general politeness, you know, and we don't do it at well, all, I mean, think about, ever. Think about, though, that, the, and I know, I'm pretty sure, this is written in 1950, but I'm pretty sure the, the nuns of our, our nuns today still follow a lot of these rules. I, I think they do. You know? We just and don't notice that. it. We don't notice it, but think about it. That's why they're always, they've made it a habitual practice of virtue. Right. That's why when they're in the room, there's they're just a ray of light. Yeah. Because they're always practicing virtue. They've right. They've made it their life's mission to practice virtue nonstop. Right. You know? Like, even though the world has gone one way, they're still going to do these things, you know? Uh, okay, quote. Um... Always rise when your superior addresses you if she is standing. When your superior is speaking courtesy... Oh, sorry. When your superior is speaking, courtesy requires that you listen respectfully if you are within hearing distance. During community recreation, however, if you are at the end of a long table, your conversation will have to be shared with the sister near you. End quote. Got something to say about that? You know what? I got distracted. You got distracted. Okay. <laughs> During community recreation, however, you're at the end of a long table. So basically, when the superior is speaking, courtesy requires that you listen if you are within hearing distance. But like if they're at a big long table and you're not within hearing right, distance, right, right, superior, you are required to have conversation with the sisters near you. Right, right. So you always have to be paying attention to the superior. Yeah. Regardless, if they talk, you have to listen. Mm-hmm. Okay, quote, never contradict your superior. A proper spirit of humility demands that you remain silent when you disagree with her opinion, unless you're expected to re- or requested to say what you think, end quote. I mean, that's good. A proper spirit. If you disagree spirit. with her opinion, you are to remain silent unless she gives you She says, what do you think? What Last time he says, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, so um, where do we leave off here? Okay. Quote, politeness forbids you to question your superior except through necessity. Then you should do so in a respectful manner, end quote. Right. You know, right. and, and uh, there's, a, there's a saying in the Catholic Girls Guide, there's, it's written there, um, that to leave right at the altar of God. Right. You know, so you don't always have to be right. I mean, a lot of times in our life we are right. But we do. We can but just. You don't always have to be. You don't. You just take it to God, and you know God, because God, God balances everything out, right? So yeah. if we're always like, um, you know, whatever, Father, you're wrong. Yeah. You know, like, like sometimes, not sometimes, always. It's better to remain silent and take right to the altar of God. Well, and it's like because you have to remember and you have to tell yourself, God put her in pos- power, posi- position of power, right? Authority. Not you. Right. If if everybody wanted to know what you thought and what how things should be run, mm-hmm. you would be in her seat without a doubt. Right, exactly. Like God would put you there if it was important enough for you to be in the position of power. Mm-hmm. You would be put there, but you're not. Right, So right. it's not for you to question and, and critique and... And I would say you should always just take it to prayer. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if you think it's something... If you think it's something so drastically wrong that something needs to be said, yeah, then you should just take it to prayer and then you should ask God to make to make the right known. Right. Right. If it's his will. And, and even and even just say too, you know, like it doesn't have to be through me. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, like we need to humble ourselves and say it doesn't have to be through me, you know. Do it through somebody else. I mean, that was St. Paul's biggest um, um, what's the word? It, well, his humility 
and how he always remember like not I don't know if remember is the right word, but he always kept at the forefront how he where he came from. Right. Like, do you know what I mean? Like he, it's like you know he wasn't even I don't I don't want to say this right. Like you know that he wasn't an apostle. Right. One of Christ's followers when Christ was here. Right. And he he always put himself in that lowly position. Yeah. Like make me as holy as I am. Or make me as holy as I what what was what was the saying what did he say at the end of one of his epistles? Make me as holy as I should be. Let others be holier than thou. Than I, provided that I should be as holy as I should be. That's or something like that's that. That's in the litany of humility. Yeah. No, but it's also an epistle. Is it in the St. Paul's in epistle? St. Paul's epistles. Yeah. Right. So, you I'm, know, I'm we don't have to be right. Words, and if we're so intent on that we're right, we just need to pray and say, have God expose what's right in this situation. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times we need to be right and we need others to know how right we are. Yeah, and that's not... Right. And that's that's very prideful. That's prideful. That comes from a place of pride. That comes from a place of pride. I was right, and everybody needs to see how right I was. Right. You know. Okay, do not, quote, do not reply to a superior's question by a nod of the head. End quote. Right. You use your words. Use your words, yeah. Right. You're nodding or, yeah, you have to use your words. Yes, sister. Full sentences. They yeah. used to teach that in school. Yeah. You couldn't, they did. When I was in school, they used to you teach that. You couldn't just nod. You yeah. couldn't nod or just say yes or whatever. Yeah. Okay, quote, always thank your superior sincerely and graciously for any special attention that she has shown to you or your relatives, for supplying your needs in the matter of clothing and medicine, for the care given you during sickness, and for arranging your studies and for your period of rest, end quote. Yes, I guess so. You must always be grateful. Yeah. Grateful to be grateful is a part of good manners. Yeah, for sure. You know, you have to be thankful for everything. Okay, quote When candy is passed around at recreation, offer the treat to the superior first and then to the other sisters. Right. End quote. When Again, candy is best. I mean, good man. I guess that's why Jordan Peterson, when he, when he said, you know, how polite you are. Remember? Yeah. In his, and I said, people. I know people that have taken it and scored very poorly on yeah. politeness. Yeah. And they thought they were a very polite person. But politeness, and this is showing this, it really has nothing to do with except do you understand Yeah, your place on the ladder, who's above you, who's below yeah. you. Do you understand, you know, do you respect the people in authority? Yeah. Do you give and them the first piece of candy? And like this, it is literally saying to put yourself absolutely last. Yeah. Treat the superior first and then your other sisters. Yeah. You put yourself absolutely last. Absolutely last. Okay, quote, when leaving any room in which the superior is presiding, as for example the, refrec the refectory or the community room, bow to her before withdrawing. Should the sisters be assembled at the time for a meal or for a community exercise, ask permission of the superior before leaving, end quote. Mm-hmm. So... Don't just walk out of a room. Right, yeah. I mean, I well, I know you used to, in the old days, you used to be allowed, you used to have to ask permission to leave the table. Yeah. Can I be excused? Yes. You know? And yeah. I mean, now we live in a society where very few people actually sit at a table. Right, right. You know, I well, mean. Even, even, too, just leaving a room in general. Yes. You just get up and walk out and not say anything to anybody or just, you know. Or, or leaving a party. Yeah, leaving a party. How about leaving a party? Do you thank your hostess? Yeah, yeah. Do you thank your hostess? Do you say goodbye to everybody? Or do you sneak out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think I, I, I think, you know, I've snuck out before. I, well, it depends. <laughs> it depends. Like, but okay, you shouldn't do looking. that. But you shouldn't, shouldn't do matter. that. It shouldn't matter. That's not good manners. Not good manners. Okay. Right? You know, you should say thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for your lovely, you know, thank everybody for their lovely conversation. Yeah. Like, we need to bring this back. back. Yeah. Like, we do. We need to go to a party and thank everybody. Yeah. Okay, quote, if it is a usual thing for a sister to leave in order to fulfill a duty, a bow will suffice by the way of asking leave to go. End quote. So that's basically just in, in response to that. Right. To them. 
Okay, quote, at the close of the weekly chapter, as soon as the superior begins her spiritual exhortation, put aside your sewing and give respectful attention to her instruction, end quote. I mean, I suppose if we're thinking uh, of ourselves, we could say if somebody's in the room talking to you, don't be fiddling on your phone. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the phone is. The like, phone is our, like the sewing is not an issue for us. Not but too we can many put people. the phone in that place. We'll put the phone in that place. And when someone, anybody is talking, if you're in a room and someone is a talking, give them your, your attention. attention. Yeah. Stop what you're doing. Look directly at them, even if you could care less, mm -hmm. and give them your attention. Yeah. Okay, quote. If you answer the phone, report the call to the superior before notifying the sister asked for. When having answered the doorbell, you receive a note or package for any of the sisters, bring it at once to the superior or leave it on her desk if she be out. Never sign any papers given to you at the door. Bring them to the superior. End quote. Well, well, I think this is all going into... Like you're at the convent. You're at the like, convent, so... I don't know how we would apply that yeah. to us. I mean, we, we there is... there. Well, you said there was something teaching your children how to actually answer 40, the phone. 40 old-fashioned things to teach your children. I saw it. Somebody posted it on Facebook, and I took a screenshot of it because I thought I'm going to go through this list this summer with my kids. Right. I mean, some of it's whatever, but a lot of things... How to take a message. How to answer a phone call. How to iron a shirt. How to... Uh, I can't remember half of it. Like, but so many things that kids do not know how to do. Right. You know? So, we're going to try and do that this summer. And, uh, yeah. But well, I think... Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Because we're at the hour and then... Yeah. So, we have to work on... We have to work on bringing this... If we, if we live... If the world is barbaric... How can we complain if we're not doing our very best to bring culture and refinement back into it? Right, right. You know, how can we complain if we are not being upright? Yeah. If we are not doing the things necessary for politeness? Mm -hmm. You know, if we're not paying attention to propriety, to duty, to yeah. um, all these things. Like we have, we, we have nothing to say. Yeah. We, have, we haven't got a leg to stand on. If you want to complain about how evil the world is, then, um, you know, you have to first look at yourself. Like, yeah. am, am I bringing the culture to the world? Mm -hmm. Or am I sneaking out the back door at a party? Party, yeah. I've done that. I'm just... I'm just... Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, okay, I'll just make my getaway yeah. now. And I think it's very common. Yeah. I think it's very common. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so so let's you know think about let's think, think about these things, yeah, and put and put uh, and make it our job, make it our job. Well, it is our job because we want to be saints. So right, right. There's nothing new about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll leave it there, and then we'll be back, hopefully, God willing, next week with more good manners and lists of things to do. <laughs> and uh, but until then, we hope you oh, all. Just a minute, oh. Mrs. Antoine. Well, okay. I was say weird. <laughs> I was just uh, giving you a salute goodbye, Mrs. Antoine. Oh, is that what you want to do? Yeah, you can call me Mrs. Drabic. I will not. You're <laughs> my mother. I'll call you mother. Although, actually, you know, in Pride and Prejudice, they called their mother mom, mom, mom. No, mom, like ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. But they didn't say it like that, right? Like that's too harsh. They said it. They called her mom. Like ma madame, uh huh, but they didn't call her mom. They called her mom, ma'am. Like my accents messing it up. Watch Pride and Prejudice. You'll have to see the way they do it. They address their mother as ma'am, right? But they didn't say ma'am. Like that's not. not uh, I mean, often in the old days, it was very common for for people to address the father as sir. Yeah. Um. Actually, you know, I <laughs> think there's this. I'm not even gonna say. It, but anyways, there's this. This. Sh this. Sh family out there christian family on tv i'm not going to say it is because whatever but they the, they all the people in the family every single one of them call the grandpa sir really? when they're talking to him they say yes sir yes sir all of them even even the even the son like the adult son still when referencing his dad says yes sir all the grandchildren say yes sir Right, yeah. I mean, it's very important. There uh, was St. Thomas uh, More, 
who uh, kissed the hands of his father every day. Yeah. There you, you go. You know, like for a shine of respect. Yeah, yeah. And these are, let's bring them back, people. That's all I have yep. to say. So we'll leave it there. Lots of food for thought. And um, we'll be back, God willing, again next week. And uh, until then, we hope you all have a very blessed week. May our Lord bless you and our Lady guide you always. And St. Teresa, pray for us.